you know, life tests you. And I tell people that you're always going to be thrown tests throughout your life. And it's really how you decide you're going to handle them. And what's not only what's good for you, but what's good for your soul. I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. We have Cindy McCain on the show today. Now, I was excited about this prior to speaking with Cindy, but after the conversation, I realized this is one of the most powerful, potent conversations I feel like I've had on this show. Cindy is the real deal, and we get into several areas and topics, why not nows in her life, that lend extremely valuable lessons. Many of you may know Cindy as the widow of the United States Senator and 2008 Republican presidential nominee John McCain from Arizona. I spent 20 years in Arizona and became pretty familiar with the McCain family and in politics. What happened last year was Cindy actually made a cross-party endorsement of Joe Biden. And this is something that doesn't happen often. Uh, But during the presidential election, she kind of hopped the fence in terms of her endorsement. And in this episode, we talk a little bit about that. She talks about the fact that if, if you're not going to stand up for what's right now, when are you going to stand up for what's right? But we do not focus on politics the whole time, I guarantee. In fact, one of the areas I was most excited to explore with her was just For those of us who have been disenchanted with politics in general, something that she has lived and breathed for most of her life, what do you suggest? And she had some great suggestions. What a lot of people don't realize is Cindy McCain is a big businesswoman. She is the chairperson for Hensley, which is a beer distribution company. And she talks about being a female in that role, in in this world. And when she took the helm, took over the helm, there was a day, a specific moment when she was very nervous to go in and and share the news um, with her executive leaders of what was about to happen in some shift in, in leadership. And her main takeaway lends so much wisdom that I've been thinking about it and using this in my mind in certain situations ever since we spoke. Cindy and I discuss grief and loss and processing grief after losing her husband and then going directly into the 2020 election. Cindy shares some of the things that that she realized about how she was processing grief. And in her new book, she's able to talk that through and really use it as a tool for helping others as well. Speaking of her most recent book, check it out. It's called Stronger, Courage, Hope, and Humor in My Life with John McCain. Cindy is still very active with her humanitarian work, and she also was just nominated by President Joe Biden to serve as the ambassador to the United Nations Agencies for Food and Agriculture. I hope you get as much out of this episode and conversation as I did. And without further ado, here is Cindy McCain. (music) 
Cindy McCain, welcome to the Why Not Now show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And in the spirit of Why Not Now, let's hop right in. Can you tell me about a time when you had a big decision to make and you had to ask yourself, why not now? I, I actually have two examples of that. And, and you'll understand when I, when I talk about it. The, the first one was, of course, this recent political season when I decided to, to jump party lines and endorse Joe Biden for president. It was a it was a very soul searching moment for me because uh, I had never done that before, and I also, you know, had the memory and legacy of my husband kind of standing behind me a bit and wondering whether I was doing the right thing. But you know, at some point in your life, and this happened to me, uh, and and during that time frame was it's if you're not going to stand up for right for what's right right now, then then when are you going to do it? And so that's what I, I was saying to myself, why not now? I mean, we ha- I felt we had to do something about it. I'm not trying to politicize the show or anything, but it was, it was a huge leap for me. And it was something I was way out of my comfort zone. Uh, I had, you know, I, I wondered whether I was doing the right thing, but I knew, I knew that something had to be done and someone had to say something. And so that was my first example of it. And I, I had no idea the impact it would have until obviously much later when we saw the results. That was the first one. And the second one was the writing my book. You know, pan- the pandemic did a lot of evil, horrible things to people. But for me, there was one part of it that was that was good. And that was I had not had time to really I hadn't taken the time, I should say, to really grieve for my husband. Uh, as soon as you know we we finished the funeral and just about a week or two later, I went straight back to work. And when I hit the road, I was all over the world. I was really, really pressing myself. So I hadn't really sat down or really t- gone on an inward search of me and you know the change in my life and the and everything that was going on, not having the you know the anchor of our family around anymore. And so, so during that time frame, I, I was obviously up north at our ranch. There was uh, nobody, you know, I was pretty much alone a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time. And I decided I would write a book. I decided I would go back through not just my, my memories, but the, all the video and the, and the written memories, you know, all those kinds of things and put together a book. And that's what I did. It was very cathartic for me. And it was something that I look back on now, and I think it was necessary that I go through that, you know, not really understanding it at the time. But, but uh, the, the writing of the book was something that was, uh, that was why not now? And it was really good for me. It, it really kind of uh, brought me back on track a little bit, if, I, if, that's, if that's a way to say that. But you know, whenever you have a huge loss the way we did, it was trying to get trying to get used to the new normal. And this was certainly a part of that. Wow. Okay. These are incredible, two incredible why not now moments. And I'd love to just double down and kind of click into each one because they both just have so much to offer. And so starting with with the first that you mentioned and and that moment and decision to jump party lines, as you said, a total Mm -hmm. renegade move, but, but definitely requires a lot of of confidence. Was there a moment where you just had made your decision or did it bubble for a long time? Or how did that process go? I I really think it it bubbled for a long time. I had sat back like everyone else in the country and watched the demeaning of our troops by our leader, the the demeaning of my husband by by this man, demeaning of the process, uh, you know, the electoral process and the process that we as a democratic society uh, go through when we when we are electing a new leader. And what I knew if he lost or if he'd won the transfer of power, especially because he lost, would not be peaceful. And that's indeed what we saw. So mm-hmm. I felt that it was really, really important to to stand up and do something about it. I, you know, I like everyone else. Also, I was yelling at the TV 24 seven, you know, <laughs> watching everything going on. So mm-hmm. so uh, when I made the decision to do it, uh, 
confidence yes but i have to say i was i was i felt like i was on a bit of a of a tight rope you know over the grand canyon actually at the time <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and i think it would be fair to say you know you've navigated a lot of healthy tension and and, and probably unhealthy at times too healthy and unhealthy tension in your life you have your your mastery i'd say in that for those listening who are maybe thinking about making a decision or making a move that's probably not going to be the most popular among some of their supporters. What advice do you have to them to really try and, as you said, you know, stand up for what you feel is right, if not now, then when, but, but do that in a way that can be effective versus more yeah. destructive. Yeah. Well, it, you know, for, for anybody, uh, you're making a big decision in your life, maybe a job change or a, a life mate change or, you know, whatever may be happening. You're always going to have that feeling of the lack of confidence. You know, am I doing the right thing? And what I tell people, for me anyway, because I experienced it, is don't overthink it. I knew in my heart for me that I was going to do something. I, I didn't, wasn't sure what it was going to be, but I was going to do something. And I think for anybody who's experiencing anything, you know, tr dramatic in their lives, trust your gut, trust your heart and your gut. And that's the only thing I can say that would be even remotely helpful because every process is different. And that's what I did. I, you know, something told me it was the right thing. My gut told me it was the right thing, even though it was very, it was, you know, it was very scary out there because I was all alone. <laughs> and right. I always had my husband to back me up on things. And of course, he he was not there anymore. And so, but I knew it was the right thing. And I, I just, so, so that's what I did. And I think it had a dramatic impact on the outcome. I do too. And thank you for your bravery. I would truly believe seeing is believing. And that's, you know, that's something that you're, you are demonstrating and, and for men and women, but I'd say, especially, you know, women, I was at a brunch yesterday with a bunch of other female founders and we were talking about confidence. And it occurred to me that there have been a lot of times where I'm not sure if I've really been confident in a situation or if I've been pretending to be confident, but Either yeah. way, either way, I showed up, right? I'm not even sure how, I, you know what I mean? It's like you, it, there's a line. It, yeah. yeah. And it's a, it's you know, a line that you groove with. You dance with that line sometimes. I completely understand. You know, my, my, uh, my father uh, founded a, a very large uh, business in Arizona. Yeah. We are the Anheuser-Busch beer wholesalers. And when he passed away, I was, you know, I, I knew I had to go back to the cor corporate headquarters and reintroduce myself to them, although they knew me, and calm them to make them understand that this, I was not going to sell, I was going to keep the, the business in my family. But it was a little bit daunting for me to sit at a table of about a dozen men and have them say to me, well, you're just a woman, you know, you probably want to sell or you want, want it. And it was my first taste of true intimidation. <laughs> and, and I sat right there and did the same thing and said, no, I'm not going to, and this is going to stay in my family and basically got up and left. <laughs> so wow. it, it, it was, it was, that was another daunting time in my family that I, I made a decision and, and was very scared though. I was, you know, I was alone. My dad was gone. I mean, it was, it, uh, same thing. I'd already always had my dad with me. And, and so I, the, there's, there's, I guess, you know, life tests you. And I tell people that you're always going to be thrown tests throughout your life. And it's really how you decide you're going to handle them. And what's not only what's good for you, but what's good for your soul. Absolutely. I can imagine the intensity in that year even because that was the year 2000, right? Presidential election. Yeah. We yeah. had your husband is, um, you know, on the ticket and you were, yeah. he's your father. <laughs> you're t taking over. The, it just, I can't even imagine the amount of, <laughs> of healthy tension in that year for you. But it, I appreciate you saying that because I think, you know, there's, I talk a lot about, uh, or I, I work with female leaders, executives, founders, and one of the number one conversations is imposter syndrome. Even though these are C-level execs and you would look at them and think there's no chance given your decorated resume that you suffer from, not suffer, but you navigate yeah. imposter syndrome. And it, the truth is everybody does, right? Everybody so, does. You're right. 
You're and if they say right. they don't run, because they're probably not being very truthful yeah, exactly. or very self-aware. <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> Well, thank you. And and I we, if we have time, I'll, I want to touch back on this. Why not now? Number one, and and just your your point of view on some things. And then secondly, gosh, this this why not now of why don't I sit down and actually grieve and write this book a couple years later? You know, some time after your husband had passed, and I I just I'm curious about the delta between, you know, when it happened and going back to work and then deciding, okay, it's COVID pressing pause, you know, you kind of press pause on grieving, I would say maybe during. Yeah. And how was that experience? And and you wrote this beautiful book, Stronger, which I imagine was just as much for you and your family as it was for the readers. Uh, You know, it's, it's interesting because as you said, you know, you press pause and we all did, we all pressed pause. We were, we had to stay home. We had to, had to find new ways to kind of entertain ourselves and keep ourselves busy and, you know, new ways to, new ways to spend the day kind of thing. It was really good because, you know, you, you know, we, John and I at least had time at, you know, during the, that during the period that he was he was uh, suffering from this, that, to really talk about it, talk about our life, talk about our marriage, talk about our children. You know, all the things that you sometimes leave unsaid or don't say enough, kind of th- kind of thing. And so we had time to do that. Uh, but what I didn't have time to do because I felt like, well, John would want me to get back to work. John would want me to be strong, and that's indeed true. But the truth is, grieving is a very personal process. And so I just did it differently. I went back to work and then with COVID, uh, had to come to a screeching halt. And that was when I really spent the really good amount of time soul searching and really grieving him. And and that was important. That's a, a very important part of the process. And so uh, and this book came out of it. So I think, you know, there's some good things come out of the, these these process, you know, these things you go through and these these hardships sometime. And uh, if that can happen, then that's always a good thing. You can produce something that's good. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, everyone. If you are digging this podcast, please do us a favor and subscribe, rate and review on iTunes. It just takes a moment and it means a ton to us. Yeah, such a, a gift for you to have come out of that process and, and going through and, and and providing them to the world with this book. I think, you know, as as listeners are hearing this, there's there's a lot of people grieving right now. And in a different capacity, I kind mm-hmm. of did the same thing. My son was born three months early. He was in the NICU for, for three months and yeah. very, very young. And and I found myself not really grieving for a good year, year and a half, kind of just yeah. pushed through and and then it starts to process. What advice do you have to people who are maybe self-aware that they're in that spot? They're just, they're not really right. fully processing yet. You know, interestingly enough, I, I had the same experience. I had two of mine in the NICU and one of them uh, we baptized because we thought we were going to lose him. Um, so I understand exactly what you were saying and and that whole process because it was a couple of years before I really grieved mm-hmm. that whole thing. But, so what I tell people is number one, don't listen to other people. Uh, you know, I had I had a lot of people telling me uh, when John died how to grieve. You know, mm-hmm. you're not doing it right, and you're not, you know, mm-hmm. you're not, uh, you know, you should be doing it this way. This is what I did, and really, there is no right answer to that because it's very personal. So it, as long as as long as it happens to you and then it's not bottled up, and and that's for me was not something that I was aware of. I just at, at looking back on it now, I can see where it was. You know, it was a good, very good thing. Mm-hmm. My biggest, I think, takeaway is, again, don't let anyone tell you how to do this, how, what the process is. It's you. It's yours. It's important that you do it your way. And that that's the biggest lesson I learned. I, I finally didn't. I well, very well-meaning people, but I just, I, no, I got to do this my way. I hope that, that people are feeling relieved. I, I almost do myself just knowing that 
you know, you, you can't really do it wrong. There really isn't a right no, or wrong, right? There's no right or wrong. No, there's no right or wrong. And, and that, that goes for also people that are switching jobs, like again, switching jobs or switching, you know, lifestyles you've lost or divorcing a, a spouse, um, any of those kinds of things, any big changes. It's, it's your process. You have to do it your way. And, Mm -hmm. and that's because, you know, if you try to live it for somebody else, it's just not going to work. And that Mm -hmm. was part of what I was doing in the very beginning is what would John think? What would John want? And, you know, I still think those things, but the truth is he's not here now and I'm going to have to do it my way. And so it, that's an important lesson. I think a lot of widows learn that too. Wow. That's powerful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how do you invest in yourself, Cindy, and just your own growth? What do you do to, um, you know, continue yeah. that? Well, I, you know, that for me, it's been, you know, I, a lot of opportunities have arisen from, uh, from my endorsement of, of President Biden mm-hmm. and a lot of opportunities aside from that. And I'm at kind of a crossroads in my, in my life right now. And that I have a lot of different avenues I can take and it's very exciting for me. Uh, I have, you know, now I'm, I'm on a new, I'm on a new path. I mean, it's a new, like I said, the new normal, I don't have my husband anymore. And I, and the, these opportunities are very exciting to me. So I'm, again, at a crossroads and trying to decide which path do I take, you know, the road less traveled or the road that's traveled kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so it's very, for me, it's very exciting. And I have, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, it's all, nothing bad can happen from this because it's been, I've had a great life and I've had a great, uh, I've had a front row seat to history on everything, having been with my husband and, of course, experiencing the things that we did together. So it's uh, it's it's an exciting time. I'm I'm 66 years old and I'm and I never thought I would be in this situation having these opportunities. And it's wonderful. It's very keeps me young. <laughs> oh, I'm over here just smiling because I'm excited <laughs> to see what you do with you know, the a blank canvas full of opportunity and um, right. talk about a why not now season. Exactly. Know. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. It's perfect. And are you still involved with Hensley? And, and mm-hmm. is that something that's, that's active and a part of your days or? You know, I'm obviously not the day to day manager of the company and I haven't mm-hmm. been for a long time. Uh, but, but I'm in on, you know, this is my, my name's on the building. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. obviously, and I'm chairman of the board. So I do keep up on, on everything that's going on, the big decisions, the changes that have occurred in our industry, which has been interesting. Uh, you know, like, like every company we've had to somewhat change how we our daily business because of COVID, you know, so mm-hmm. there's, and, and habits are changing uh, with regards to, to not just alcohol use, but people's lifestyles are changing. And so uh, mm-hmm. beer is a big part of that. So <laughs> it's all, it's all in how we, you know, we have, and we have to change too. We have to be really, uh, you know, roll with the times, I guess is be, it would be how you put it, but yeah. it's very, it's exciting. It's a great, you know, that's a great yeah. business. It's also, it keeps me very involved with things, you know, world, world issues that affect our industry and affect, of course, affect our country. Well, this is kind of a full circle moment for me because I'm sitting here drinking Super Coffee, which is a company I've in- invested in. And Good. yeah, and, um, you know, as and, and Anheuser-Busch is a, a big shareholder mm-hmm. in the company. And obviously, Hensley is one of the largest distributors right. in the world, right? So right. here we are, you know, it's incredible team and, and company. But my goal is to help get more women a seat on the cap table, not just a seat at the table. Yeah. And as a chair, I mean, do, is it chairman or do they say chairwoman? Uh, that we use chairman. I'm not chairman. hung up on titles. Yeah. yeah, No, it doesn't matter. I was just curious. I don't know too many. <laughs> so, But that's great. Again, seeing is believing. And so um, that's, it's exciting to, you know. Well, it's, there's only in our industry too, there, there are only, there are very few women that are either ch- or actually running companies. And those of us that are, are generally we've inherited. And so it, it's a very male dominated industry. It's something that, that although I have, have really pushed it for, through our company to, to hire more women in various roles, like not just 
off stuff, but I mean, I want them on the trucks. I want them seeing, you know, what's, what's really important and how the trends are. Women are a large part of not just the beer industry, but the beverage industry in general. Mm-hmm. So uh, their, their tastes and their likes are a big, are different, obviously from men and, and we want to know. And so, and, and that helps us sell it too. So uh, I love the fact we have women involved. Uh, you know, all six of us can meet in a phone booth, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but we're there, you know, <laughs> is there a text thread that you all have where you, <laughs> <laughs> I would, if I were you, I mean, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, one day I hope to join that, that thread. <laughs> Good. So, that's great. And I guess just one one follow up question and then I'll I'll get to the final and and try and wrap sure. us up here. But as as I look at, you know, the I guess you could call it political divide, call it disarray, whatever, I see how many people are disenchanted by yeah. the parties, by just everything that's gone on over the last six, eight years. And and having really carved your own path and space for you to stand. Do you self-identify with a party anymore? Do you, is that important um, for those of us who are just so disenchanted? Yeah. What do you recommend? What can we do? Well, I'm part of the disenchantment. Uh, I, I <laughs> am a Republican party. and I will remain a Republican. I mean that because mm-hmm. I believe in my party, but mm-hmm. my party and I believe like the Democratic Party also, we've lost our way. Civility, uh, decency, empathy, kindness, all the things that both parties stood for in, in welcoming people into our parties of different beliefs and, and big tent theory, all those kinds of things is gone. It's evaporated. And so so for now, uh, you know, I'm you know, I will vote for for the best candidate, not the party. And I never did really vote for the party. But the best candidate now is even more important because uh, dominance uh, in either house or dominance in, uh, you know, it, with our governors and things are, is not that important to me anymore. I mm-hmm. want good government. And I think that we as Americans deserve civility. We deserve bipartisanship and we're not getting it. And the, we have the power, we as voters and especially as women, we have the power and, and we need to demand better service from our members of Congress. And by that, we pressing the button or, right, you know, co- coloring in the box at the voting booth. Um, it's very it's very important that we as mothers, as as businesswomen, as, you know, leaders in our communities, we need to step forward now and say enough is enough. I've watched this kind of attitude Um, happen in countries around the world. I use Liberia for an example. Um, They now have a female leader and have had female leaders, I should say, uh, through the years. I don't know if there's one now. I think it's a male now. But the the women, they've been at war for 25 years. And the women finally said, enough. You know, and they, they, there's a lot of different methods they use. We're not going to take it anymore. No more war. You guys, if you men, if you want to go fight, go someplace else, but we're taking back our country. And that's exactly what they did. And it's a peaceful, you know, growing country now. And we see more and more of that occurring around the world. And I'm, I think here in the United States, women need to take a bigger role. Uh, you know, we've got we don't have time for this nonsense. We're raising families. We're we're trying to put food on the table. We're trying to make sure that that our communities are safe. All the things that women are really good at and and really, really, um, you know, are, are involved in. We need to be doing and civility is one of them. Why should we allow our children to see a president or a leader of, of a party or a leader in, in the House of Representatives or your state legislatures? behave the way these people have done. It's unconscionable. And, and the result of our great, you know, of our great, you know, people, people not standing up to the task was what happened on January 6th. So it's, it's time. I just believe, I believe in women completely on how we can control this. I think it's time we just simply say it's enough, enough. We want better service. Hmm. Well said. Thank you. Absolutely. So if we were to go back to year 2000 and Mm -hmm. you're in quite the year, you're getting ready to walk into this boardroom 
and I can I can just visualize what this boardroom probably looked like. Um, And here you are getting ready to share your vision. Mm -hmm. If you could go back and just say something to yourself before walking in there, what would you say? They're more scared of you than you are of them. (laughs) <laughs> I love because it. that was the truth, but it, it's the absolute yeah. truth. They are, they were more scared of me than I was of them, but I, I, uh, I, you know, obviously I had to keep a calm demeanor and, and I a face that they couldn't break through, but yeah, it's hard as a woman because we're told, you know, many of us have been told, and I'm not suggesting my family did this, but I'm speaking just in generalities. I've been told that we're not up to the task and, mm-hmm. and we are up to the task. Not only were we up to, but we'll do it better. And so it's that confidence. And I think that confidence in me grew with my, as I, as I got older also. Mm -hmm. And that's age has, age has some good things about it. (laughs) Wisdom is one of them. (laughs) Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I think the, the competence that you had growing up in the business and the optics and, and that also leads into confidence, right. From just pure and community, um, but thank you for sharing that. I, that's a great way to, to wrap it up here. And also thank you for your service. Thank you. And for your husband's service. I was a proud Arizona resident for about 20 years. So um, He was a good man. He was a very good man. We miss him. Incredible. Incredible. Absolutely. Well, we will be excited to follow along this, you know, next season of what you where you decide to go with all these opportunities so we'll be watching and and definitely cheering for you and i encourage everyone to check out stronger your new book and thank you for your time and wisdom cindy thank you for having me and good luck on your endeavors Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your why not now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to why not now at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now? Oh, 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 o